If that matters. Everyone seems to be a Yeah. 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 Ye
Sina! Shit! What are you doing? Martha, call somebody already! Call somebody! Check your phones, you guys. Yeah. 
a secret scroll. What I'll need to do, man. And probably eight speakers for surround sound camping. We create a glacier like retractable sculpture. Yes, it does. But I'm going to attack a system to set up all this crap in this standard. You know, I want a blue side water tank that spans the entire width of the stage <laughs> and then opens up to span the entire stage and gulf in the sleep the glacier like structure, you know, because the glaciers are all. And then at the end, you and I crawl into it. We submerge ourselves in everyone who's in front. We want to throw us. Yeah, and we'll put toss on the side and we'll let us. I need a long driver. That's a good idea. Let's get the audience in on this. Probably organize my concern. Get their voices in it. We'll record people talking about what they have and put it in a musical score. Huh, or even a fellowship with a lot of cash. People do love hearing themselves oh, talk. Come on, if we would just dig our shit together like all this time about, we could at least walk away with a couple of catchy tunes, put them up on YouTube and make people get more in this like Alex Ellis did. You know that video that went viral of the baby that teaches the modern dancers how to dance? At least that's what time magazine. That's great. Let's do it. Let's make that piece. Here's how it goes. We improvise. We look for material. We record it. We'll go back and call it what's useful from that material. Pop song, eventually. Exploration, initially. Are there any prayers? I think the entire room can end for now. We'll just, we'll just look around.
that's all. Let's round it up. You should, please. Round it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'll make it all catchier. <laughs> Oh, 
Tapi intinya semua itu harus berhenti. Saya tak tahu pada waktu ini semua masyarakat membaca dan feel that all of you are dead.
Um, so some of the things that we have coming up are um, we are working with other groups on the Port Ambrose um, project. Anybody familiar with Port Ambrose and what's going on there? Port Ambrose is actually a location in the water. It's offshore, it's south of Long Island, it's south of here, it's east of New Jersey. And there's a project um, where some developers want to build a big, a big liquefied natural gas terminal out there offshore in a milestone where we are. And they want to be able to import liquefied natural gas. They want to export it, bring it down. These you know, they have bomb trains that are bringing uh, fossil fuels down the Hudson corridor. They want to be able to take that and ship it overseas, or they want to be able to bring stuff in and ship it to us. They, they just want to have this terminal. And we take a very different approach. Our approach is fossil fuels have to stay in the ground if we're going to have and so we see no point in spending billions of dollars to build a terminal that's designed to ship fossil fuels in and out. There's no reason for it. We need to be putting that, we need to be putting all those resources into developing an alternative energy economy. And in fact, Long Island and that Port Ambrose location in particular, these are really ideal places for offshore wind, which has tremendous potential for our region. And so, there's kind of a timetable that's where the clock is ticking right now, and either Cuomo or Christie could kill this project at Port Ambrose. Either one of them could veto it, and they have until December 21st to do that. And so one of the things that we have going on right now is we've been uh, we've been protesting, we've been showing up when Cuomo shows up and letting him know we want him to veto this Port Ambrose project. He's going to be at the Harvard Club on this morning. Street this coming Thursday evening. We're going to be there. Um, we're going to be really yelling and screaming and telling them not to go to the Port Ambrose project. Um, which we think there's a really good chance that he might do because you may have noticed this was a really pretty good week for the climate movement mm -hmm. with the rejection by Obama of the Peace on Pipeline. And now, our Attorney General is investigating ExxonMobil for their incredible, you know, just unbelievably cynical action of covering up what they about climate in their 70s. Mm -hmm. So, Obama wanted to be able to go into the Paris talks with, you know, some clear statement, you know, showing that he's on the right side of his group. And a lot of us are thinking that Cuomo might, might well, why don't think he's going to Paris? That Cuomo really might want to be able to say, hey, I'm doing something too. So we think that there is a good shot that he may be able to do this project. It's also very, very uncomfortable. So that's something that we're working on. Um, we're also, we also we meet every other Tuesday at this really lovely storefront space, um, St. Lydia's Church, and it's also a co space on um, Bob Street in the Columbus area. And our next meeting will be a week from this Tuesday. And at that meeting, we're going to be planning a whole series of social media types, type of things, tweets, memes, whatever anybody can think of, um, for the beginning of the climate talks. And you know, this is a really, that's a time when there are going to be actions all over the world, although probably not so much in this country because it's Thanksgiving weekend. And it's sort of counterproductive to try to have an event. Um, so we were thinking that the way to go there is social media, so we're planning that. We're also planning something um, really special for the end of the climate meeting. We're working on it. If you're interested, come talk to me later. Um, and in the months ahead, oh, and we're working, we're working on divestment. Um, we're trying to get New York State and New York City, which have billions of dollars of pension money, invested in fossil fuel stocks. We're trying to get them to take that money out of fossil fuel stocks. And we're having an impact. I mean, low uh, prices will also have an impact. Um, but the city is starting to make moves toward the investment. And they have come out with a whole investment. And so we should be saying, yeah, it's really, we're really finally starting to see some movement there. Um, he's come out in favor of 
well, it's called for a study of oil and gas divestment. So the, the various pension funds are starting to move in this direction. You know, very, it's just, this is very new. This is in the last couple of years that this is starting to happen. So we're going to continue to work on the divestment front. On the state level, we are also pushing for divestment. There's a bill in the state legislature, and we have information that you can call your state assemblyman, state senator, and find out where they stand on this bill. We have information about that. It's really important to call these people and say, hey, we want the state to divest. So there are a lot of different things going on. The climate movement is a really you know, multifaceted movement, and we're trying, to, we're trying to do what we can on the local level here in Portland to play our part. And uh, I do have cards here. I'll, I'll put them over here by the door. Um, you know, but it's really simple. I mean, our website is 350 Brooklyn It's really, really simple. And um, we have a Facebook page. We're on Twitter. And um, I'm working with Linus. And, you know, I'll really be happy to talk to you afterwards about our plans for the Paris talks or anything else that we're doing. I guess and the, other, the only other thing that I, that I just would like to say about it is that we are a new group. We're a really collaborative group. And I think we've done a good job as a new group of kind of working with people where they are and with whatever they're able to contribute. And, um, you know, somebody came to us recently, to a meeting recently, and she said, you know, I, I have a seven-year-old, I really can come to a lot of meetings, but I work in a design shop where I can get you free printing of all kinds of signs. And she, you know, she, she got it through printing all kinds of signs. I mean, just people, people find the way that, that makes sense for them to contribute. You know, maybe it's theater, maybe it's dance, maybe it's music, whatever it might be. Um, we're really, really open to any way that anybody wants to come in and share their ideas. So I love it. Maybe can I just say one thing? Yeah. Just because we have a room full of like performance yeah. people, the, the, the event that they're planning for the um, end of the Copperwell. Uh, conference is is a performance of event. So yeah, if you want to get involved as a performer, that's a great thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Drought will burn a crowd, and that's enormous. 
one's interest. And it so happens that the enemy of the climate is pollution. Garbage dumps. And everything. I don't care. Stop fuck alone. Let him walk away. Go tell him he can go. I don't want to see him anymore anyway. You'll never find another ass as juicy as mine anymore. Oh, garbage dumps. <clears throat> I like chimneys, or pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, so we have to do something. The survival of our planet, and most importantly, of our kids, depends on it. You see, progress demands that we sacrifice a bit of our own personal happiness in the name of a greater happiness for all. And that's why we've decided to clean up this stuff, to bury everything, do away with the pollution, make this place again, like before the beginning. We're putting in a golf course with grass as silky and green as the grass in the English court. It's time to go back to nature or breathe. Last, feed again from the very air that saw the dawn of creation. It's time to get restored. Oh, if we can only leave the world free from pollution for our kids, you you're going to keep repeating that he's going to walk away. 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 You keep repeating it. He's going to walk away. This is if you want it to happen. The work starts in three days. Three days? What about us, sir? What, what's going to become of us? I mean, we ask without raising our voices in three piece suit. Bentley scratches his temple. Apparently worried. Well, let's put the difference. Seven days instead of three. One week. That, that way you have plenty of time to figure out what to do because it's a shame to let human beings live from and on. Such a pile of shit. Live so utterly destitute. A tremendous shame. You know, we're doing this primarily for you. The weakest and humblest amongst us. Society's rejects. Seven days, that's all. When you have nothing, shouldn't you even thank the devil? So to three piece suit Bentley, we said thank you. And then he disappeared behind the tinted glasses of a small eye Yes, yes, yes! He's gonna walk away. I heard you the first time. Let him walk away. I, 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 I have him on a leash. Now, now aside from playing matchmaker, are you with us or are you not? Because we've all decided to fight for our job. <laughs> to stand up for it. When they come with their bulldozers, we'll be smack in the middle of the garbage. They'll have to bury us with the garbage. Because their real pollution, it's us. There's no reason to kick us out of oh, this, this rat hole. The reason for their no reason for their dreams to always be built on our backs. Who? Who would you say he was sleeping with? Who? That bitch. You got to get me. Come on. Come on, slap me. Wait, wake me up. That, that's, that's impossible. <laughs> Not with her. I'm, I don't mind being made a fool, but it, at least he's leaving with a pretty woman. Somebody better than me. But with this slut always decked out like a stolen truck. That's bullshit. <laughs> oh, he wants to get back at me. Oh, he wants to make me the laughing stock of this dump. Well, I'm not going to put up with this. Not this time. You asshole! You're not going to get away with this! Oh, and then the other one was three piece Sue Bentley with his brass like the Queen of England. It's always the same bullshit. <laughs>
Titi. Short clay by David Gierke. Morelu, an ancient male tuatara in the form of an old rocker in the Maori language of the indigenous peoples of New Zealand. Morelu means survivor or remnant. Tuatara means spiny back. Tuatara are rare medium-sized reptiles found only in New Zealand. They are the last survivors of an order of reptiles that thrive in the age of dinosaurs. Titi, a young female sooty shearwater bird, mutton bird, puff inesis, greasis, or titi. The young of these birds are a traditional food source for Maori, preserved in copious amounts of their own fat and salt. So they may perish in large numbers before reaching adulthood. Titi, rest assured, those who eat them regularly will die prematurely of heart attacks. A.G. Aurora Australis, a famous person and the Southern Knights. Setting, darkness, wind. The sea smell brought bugs, you and your perky offspring ate the bugs, and then, and then you bit their heads off. I had no teeth left. I was hard to bite their heads off with no teeth. He has a third eye. Skin grows over it on the top and of his head. head older. Did you see the that like bouncy birds flying up above? I am not so proud of it. On our Tamarikus, you will lower the silver flying in the sky. And now my inside eye lets me see the future. They say with age comes wisdom, but sometimes age comes a little. <laughs> I foresaw that we needed to build a boat and move my eggs to Antarctica before our island was flooded. The third eye is not connected. I heard one of the scientists say there was a useless bunch of bristle or relic. Something of the past. I am already. I am already the survivor. The Maori, they respect us and our powers. They aid you. To get our powers. And then their rats aid you. And then their white hair rats aid you. And then that happened again. I am the new no. Where's your wife? You ate her! Oh no, not me. <laughs> the skewer. They have no souls, not me. Yep, she was laying our eggs. And so when you were starving, you, TT, will come and eat my timerini. Oh. Then tear me apart with your birdie beaks and scaly claws. Oh, I know. No, not me. You! That's why you agreed to help me. We are your reserve food supplies. Oh, no. I felt sorry for you. And now the, world, the earth was too warm now, and so all you had was girls. The temperature of the ground determines the sex of the two of Hotter and more females, colder and more males. It's very old school. Brave to look. Look outside. Antarctica, I foresaw it. It was with my third eye, and there it is. How can you ever um, doubt this, my an iceberg? Iceberg. But And the Royal no. Australis, the Southern Lights, is playing on the It's Antarctica. You don't know what Antarctica is. I, uh, <laughs> you lived your whole life in the island, and it's a sign. It, it must be more close. Maybe. Right? Maybe is there? Maybe that's all that's left. We need to get on to it. Let us carry us to our new home. No, no, no. It's heading north. Be clear. No, it wants to die. No, we, we can sing to it. Bring it back. Sing. If you listen really, really hard, you can hear the ice cream singers. Suddenly, there's an almighty crack. Crash! Splash! Water is thrown from a stagehand's bucket onto Moreku and TT in a very clumsy, but hopefully funny way. <laughs> I'm Calvin! <laughs> Calvin! <laughs> Calvin! The iceberg it sang to me! <laughs> Hello! <coughs> My name? Is Al Gore, and I'm a Calvin iceberg. <laughs> That's Al Gore. 
<laughs> Sorry, you should have the real one. Are you ready to get the real Al Gore? I'm the real Al Gore. A towering iceberg. And I might have been singing before, but now that I have your attention, I have an important announcement for the whole world. I told you so! Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's, it's a siren. A siren. Sing us, and we, we must sail on. On. On and on. To the end of the world. The end. The end. The end. Let it go! <laughs> Folks, I'm Aurora Estrays. The seven lights. Woo. But lately, I haven't been feeling very bright. Mm -hmm. Because. <laughs> We've all been dozing. Soon the only thing for Rosen will be our own cold <laughs> But this, this is where the, the revolution starts. Snow goes wide on the mountains tonight. Got a scientist to be seen. Kingdom of misinformation. And it looks real, but it's really scary. I see bouncing like a frozen heart's 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 let our voices grow. Let it go. Let it go. We can't hold us back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Turn off the gold in the door. I don't care what I do not. made oceans. Oceans made the first animals. The animals <coughs> made turtles. The turtles came to the beach to lay eggs. And through those eggs came mankind. And through mankind, my forefathers. And I, oh, 
I appeared in a small fishing village east of India, right on the coast of the Bay of Bengal. These turtles are true internationalists. With nautical miles and doormats to them, follow currents under the ocean, wipe your feet and just move on. My mother, oh, my mother, brought me to see the sight when I was small. A dawn that I remember, very distinctly, waiting behind a rock, we saw the turtles appear from the ocean and plant their eggs right where they were born. A miracle, I said. It's science, mm -hmm, said my mother. Science, an illiterate, uneducated, hard-working woman with sea salt in her hair said that it's science. The greatest science on this planet. The science of afterlife. Turtles. Turtles do not need to die to have another life. They have many lives in this one. How is that possible? I said, there, there, that's your great, 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 great grandfather. She threw the boat remained tied to the coast and I rode it so furiously out into the ocean. Either no one was there, I thought, or I'm dead, or maybe.
historically speak. Humans, when faced with a threat, have three options. Demonic forces. 
Death by demented cartoon characters. Death by the devil, as played by Meryl Streep. <laughs> death by death. Hmm. And none of that is real. Right? Right? Mm. Right? None of that is real. James Hansen, I was hoping, would turn out to be a kind of lunatic, you know, fear monger from the, from the ego fringe left. But in fact, he's a, uh, oh, he's a NASA scientist. Yeah, he's testified before Congress. He is the first person on the planet to make a connection between Venus's carbon-saturated clouds and its intense temperatures and our own predicament. He is an excruciatingly smart guy with this incredible set of um, frontal lobes. <laughs> frontal lobes. This is where it all happens, folks, in the frontal lobes. This is where we make a connection between present action and future consequence. And James Hansen just happens to have extraordinary frontal lobes. It's incredible he can even keep his head up. So, so, so sorry for him because he gets it. And he has kids. And his kids have kids, which means he's got skin in the game. So much skin in the game. Therefore, James Hansen has used all of his NASA vacation days in the exact same way. He's traveled around the world, and everywhere he goes, he says the precise same thing. Listen, people. I did not say James Hansen was a charismatic guy. Okay, I said he was smart. Listen, doing nothing about climate change is like, um, well, it's like standing around a cocktail party while the room fills up with smoke, trading stock tips. <laughs>